what you can see here is a nice little strip of tissue. It's purple on one end and pink throughout the rest of it. As we zoom in on it, you could see that the purple or darker staining area is epithelium of a mucosa and underlying are connective tissues and perhaps smooth muscle, which I'll have to prove to you in a little bit. Notice that in the right parts of this biopsy, we have an epithelium which is squamous. It's stratified. It does not keratinize. And notice that on the other side, or on the left side of the biopsy, we have little glands. We have surface epithelium, which you will soon see is basically one uh, columnar cell. This is an example of one of the squamocolumnar junctions in the body. Here's the precise ending of the squamous component and the precise beginning of the columnar component. This happens to be the squamocolumnar junction of the gastroesophageal area. The esophagus classically is lined by squamous, and the stomach is get classically lined by columnar. It's usually the cardiac portion of the stomach that is the transition from uh, columnar to squamous. Also notice that if you look at the smooth muscle here underlying the uh, esophagus, it gets a little bit thicker right here in this junction. This is the so-called sphincter of the uh, cardioesophageal or gastroesophageal junction, although the so-called sphincter is more of a physiological sphincter. It's not as uh, bold and uh, like you would see in the other end of the stomach, so-called um, uh, gastroduodenal sphincter. Let's take a look at the classical uh, layers like we would in any part of the GI system. You have an epithelial surface, which is called mucosa. In this case, it's non-keratinized stratified squamous in the esophagus. There's a little bit of connective tissue between the epithelium and the basement membrane, uh, which could be called lamina propria. You can then see a much looser type of connective tissue called submucosa. You may see a little strip of uh, muscle right underneath the mucosa, or actually part of the mucosa, called the muscularis mucosae. Then you see the uh, more looser and perhaps more vascular uh, portion on which you see a lot of rich blood vessels, which is the submucosa. Then you see some strips of smooth muscle, and classically in the esophagus, as well as most other parts of the GI system, the uh, innermost one towards the epithelium is circular and the outer one is longitudinal. So we have epithelium, lamina propria, muscularis mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, and then there is a band of connective tissue beyond that, uh, which is either called adventitia or serosa, depending on whether there is a true lining of mesothelium, which would make it uh, peritoneal or intraperitoneal rather than retroperitoneal. However, in the esophagus, you don't have to worry about that differentiation because there is uh, uh, no peritoneum in most of the esophagus. Notice also in various places, you can see nerve, veins, arteries, more nerve, loose connective tissue, uh, with uh, fibroblasts and collagen. Then you can see the smooth muscle bundles cut longitudinally. You can see smooth muscle bundles caught trans cut transversely. You can see some more blood vessels in the submucosa. You can see a muscularis mucosa underneath the mucosa, which is basically uh, longitudinally uh, arranged. And this is the classical picture of the esophagus. Uh, what is also pretty classical about esophagus is that the squamous mucosa will eventually end and it will have a fairly abrupt transition then between the squamous mucosa of the esophagus and the columnar mucosa of the stomach. And in this part of the stomach, we usually do not see the acid secreting glands yet. Most of these are uh, um, mucus uh, type secreting glands to protect the acid contents from the esophagus 
and you could see basically columnar cells and you could see gastric pits going underneath the surface epithelium. You could see a loose lamina propria here between the glands, like glandular pits. And then once again, you'll start to see various muscle layers of the stomach, uh, classically two or three different kinds of layers. But remember one thing, if a smooth muscle fiber is cut longitudinal to its axis, the nucleus will look like a cigar. If a smooth muscle cell is cut transverse to its axis, the nucleus may look quite round. So we can see that these are probably more longitudinal fibers. These are probably more circular, and these are probably more longitudinal again, although the stomach can have a lot of variation. Beyond the muscularis, you have the connective tissue. And of course, because the stomach is 100% intraperitoneal, you will see, if you're good and lucky, and look hard enough, little tiny mesothelial cells like here and perhaps here, which line the surface, which makes this a true serosa rather than just the adventitia. Here's a little bit of fat. Here's perhaps some small blood vessels. Here's some fibers. You're allowed to see little nerves in there or even ganglia, like we, which we may be seeing here. Here's a small blood vessel. Here's all smooth muscle cut uh, transversely to the axis of the fiber. Here are some smooth muscle fibers cut longitudinally. Here is a very huge blood vessel, probably a vein because it's thin walled, of the submucosa. And then here are the mucosal glands. And here's the lamina propria between these glands, the pits, and here's some surface epithelium. Uh, when you get deeper into the um, uh, stomach and you see these little cells that look like fried eggs, with bright red cytoplasm in the central nucleus. These are the actual um, parietal cells or acid secreting cells of the stomach. Uh, but we're uh, basically near the squamocolumnar junction of the cardiac portion of the stomach. So you shouldn't have too many of those acid secreting cells here. Thank you very much. I hope we've covered it uh, nicely. We'll be seeing a couple more areas of the stomach later on as well. Thank you very much.